So I'm posting this to give notice to any new truck drivers that are women, especially. Um, watch out. Make sure y'all safe and ask questions about your trainers and stuff like that. And I would preference that y'all go with a female and not a man. But I've been training with him for two weeks locally so I can do my job, which is in a motive for Swift. Um, let's just say that his name is Robert. Robert was very inappropriate with his words, always trying to holler at me. I can, you know, I can deal with that. It became personal when I woke up and he was drinking out of my water bottle. And I'm like, dude, like, are you fucking serious? Like, why are you drinking on my water bottle? He's like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, I didn't mean to do that. Like, I can go buy you another one. I was thirsty and stuff like that. I'm like, what the fuck you mean you thirsty? I'm like, you don't fucking know me from a can of paint. Like, why would you drink out of my Hello. All right. All right. So let me start by saying. <laughs> let me start by saying. Texas in the building. What, 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 what part of Texas are you from? What What is it? Houston, Dallas. I'm from Dallas. Dallas, Texas. I gotta, I gotta give you, I gotta give you another one. Wait, 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 wait. Is that the one? Hold on. There we go. Texas yes, in the Dallas. building. All right. So, what, what's your, what, 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 go, go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, let us know a My little. My name is Erica. See, uh, your name. Erica Williams. Your name is what now? Erica. D Erica. Okay, that's a mm -hmm. that's an interesting kind of name. Like, I mean, like your mom had you, right? Your 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 mom had yeah. you. Yeah. And they 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 holding their little bungle of joy in their hands, and they doctor comes in. And say, hey, what do you want to name this precious little darling? I want to name her Dierica. Where did that come from? <laughs> Long story to sum it all up, my mm. mom named me after my aunt's boyfriend. That's pretty much it. That's what I got the name. His name was Derek, and they named me Dierica. Well, so, yeah. Uh uh. I thought you was going to come with the, okay. I thought you was going to come with the earth, the wind, the fire story. <laughs> I thought you was going to come with that, but wait, your, mm -mm. your mom named you after your aunt's boyfriend? Aunt's boyfriend at the time. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. That's weird. This awkward. It's some new, whatever. I kind of awkward. Uh, he was a part of my upbringing and being there, so I guess it's from my people' name or worse than mine. <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of awkward right there. Like, hey, I want to name my baby after your boyfriend, huh? Wait a minute, wouldn't you want to name your baby after the baby's father? I mean, like. I mean, when, nope. when when my son was born, all right, you know, before he was born, you know, me and his mother was going back and forth for names. So I, you know, if it was, if it was a boy, LaShawn, and if it was a girl, it could be either LaShonda or LaShonda or LaShondra, or we can it's, name, it's, it's or, ghetto. Yeah, or, ghetto. Right, or we can name we can name the girl after, uh, after her grandmother, but luckily it was a boy. And what's the difference? A grandmother, whatever, blood related, whoever's there supporting you, doing your child. Yeah. So I get it. Right. Whatever's going on, <laughs> I'm here and I'm alive. That's what's up, and that's and that's exactly what that's that's exactly what we're here for. Man, all right, all right. So tell us uh, a little bit about yourself. What, what, what you was doing, Erica, before trucking? Uh, I was doing just Uber and Lyft. I had got pregnant, so I stopped uh, going for my CDL. Uh, my spouse was in the service uh, in the Air Force. So I was like, hey, let's try to make some money together. He started driving. I got pregnant in Phoenix, 
in the truck with him, so I had to stop <laughs> when we was trying to be team drivers. And then I started back up, and then that's what led me to go to Swift because they hire everybody. <laughs> okay, they hire okay, okay. So you, so you got your where where how did how did you come by getting your CDL? You actually went to a school for it, or you or you got it at a company? I went to night. I went to night. We both was at night. I got my CDLs out there. If anybody know, they have a school out there in Phoenix. They'll fly you out for the training part for four weeks. Mm -hmm. And then you get your certification, come back, and you do all your training six weeks. Once I found out that I was pregnant during my six weeks, I stopped completely because of uh, my pregnancy. Right. And um, I started back up after the baby was like eight months, mm -hmm. and that's how I kind of started back into it. Okay. Yeah. And then after after that, you 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 got your CDLs. But why did you after you got your CDLs and after your baby was born? Um, let me, let me ask you the part about having a baby, a, a, a newborn, a newborn baby and you're in trucking, uh, when you went back to go to continue your, 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 your trucking experience, your baby mm -hmm. of course was eight months. How was it, how, yeah. how hard was it to number one, be away from your baby that young, and number two, uh, how hard was it to get help to take care of your baby while you was gone for, you know, for that time? Actually, it was very difficult for, like, for the first person because when he left, well, for one, I'm in Dallas, but my, my mother is located in California. So she flew out here and got my baby when he was about seven months and took him back to Cali while I did my six-week training because I had to start on my training over. I had my uh, my my permit, but I had to get all my certification and my hours through SWIFT. And so I had to send him back, and it was just very hard. I didn't really have no support here. The dad had been very active, but with his schedule and my schedule, it wasn't going to work out. So it's like I had to like sacrifice myself to be away from my child. And it was just like days where I would cry and just be having mom guilt and like just trying to think positive. My friends like, well, no, keep going, keep going. Because once you get done with this, you want to put yourself in a better financial situation than, you know, just doing Uber and doing like little shitty jobs, excuse my language, but it wasn't making mm -hmm. ends meet. And mm -hmm. I just knew the goal that I was trying to get to with my spouse because I'm like, once we get all this plan to get done and now the both money that we're making together is better. And the support now that the baby is back at home, he came back at 12 months, his family, well, his mom, uh, take care of our baby during the week while we drive on the weekends mm -hmm. and so that's kind of how we got a schedule and I just have a good support system so okay. it's all about the support and it's all about the dedication what you want to do I would I tell women all the time in my inbox on TikTok Instagram it's what you up for and what you want to do and most people get discouraged with like local jobs mm -hmm. I never had to go OTR I always had a local job even my six-week training I did in a motor I never went over the road Okay. So I would tell people, you just kind of have to work very smart and not hard. And I was just very blessed to right. get the opportunity. <laughs> All right. So you now you keep, uh, you know, you keep mentioning your 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 spouse or is are y'all married now or what's? No, we're not married. That that's my boyfriend. Oh, uh, okay. But y'all, but y'all still y'all still together though. Yes. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Cool, cool, cool. All right, all right. Awesome. Because sometimes, you know, baby, baby changes things. You know when I didn't say it was easy. I didn't say it was easy, but you know, trying to you know gather and just like this is our first child, and so it was never easy on both sides. I never, never saying he was right in situations, but I just tell people having that support with a man going through your pregnancy, right. it kind of lifts off a lot of weight from you. So that's why I tell people is don't have that support. Not that you can't do it. I'm not saying single moms don't push through, right. but I just knew that I wasn't going to be able to do it by myself with trucking because it's very hard and you have to be away from your child for so long. Exactly. For like the least 
four months. And so people, I don't think they understand, they get their permit and then don't think about what they have to do at home. And you're not really making no money. That was the whole point. I wasn't really making no money. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't pay for a daycare and stuff like that because I was making like five or $600 doing training. <laughs> Wasn't that's not nothing when you have rent that's sixteen hundred dollars. Right. You know, so I just tell people you have to have your support system and your everything in order. All to right, do it. All right. So night transportation, and and you did mention that you never uh, went OTR. So wh how how long was it? Like what? Right after you decide you decided to you know look for other opportunities than to stay with, uh, not swift, but stay with night because I'm assuming night was, you know, because of night you was able to get your CDLs, but I'm, I'm, you know, if I'm reading this right, I'm assuming you didn't, mm -hmm. you didn't fulfill they, their obligation to, for them to pay for your mm. CDL. Uh, uh, no, I did not. So I did my four weeks. Like I said, I got my permit, came back home, changed my license over. Um, when I when I posted the list, they was backed up when I got this. It was, it was during COVID. So I was on a waiting list to find a trainer. I came back in September. They didn't find me a trainer until, like, November. Mm. So I'm like, okay, you know, a lot, you know, it's piling up, piling up, you know, the baby, this, bills, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Unemployment was running out because I was, I was, trying to get my unemployment and stuff together mm -hmm. and I didn't get it to the end of the year. So I'm like, let me sacrifice this and do what I need to do. I didn't complete that with them. And that's a whole nother story that I would have to tell you that <laughs> people do not like to pay, pay women of color and they don't like to pay people that are pregnant because mm -hmm. they feel like we are a hazard to them. So I left night and I had to almost sue them. Mm. Because they discriminate against me because of me being pregnant. Okay. And there's a lot of paperwork within that. So that's why I tell women, be careful on what company you pick because it is a reflection of you. And they okay. treat you like crap depending on what company. And I left there because me and my spouse, I told you, we all started at the at the same company. Right. And when uh, I told them I was pregnant... They uh, came back the next day and was like, uh, my man was like, I don't think that it's best for you to work here. What? And I was like, what do you mean? You know, I didn't get off my training. Mm -hmm. I didn't get, and I'm going on the, going on the road. I, first week, they finally gave me a trainer. Why did I go out with my trainer? She was talking on her, uh, like, uh, I don't know what they call it. Not the headset, but they speak kind of like into like a mic kind of I forgot what it's called blue Perry. and she was talking to somebody <laughs> yeah they, they was talking to someone and they was calling each other nigger this nigger that nigger this and speaking like that this okay so Caucasian then, people okay saying, so this is so wait wait hold up you you in the passenger yeah. seat with with a, Carca a passenger seat with a, ca day, with, with a Caucasian female trainer yes and she's on a yes. she's she's on the phone talking to somebody yes. else and they going back with the with the hard E R word? Yes, like hard, very hard. Did, very hard. Didn't, didn't she realize the didn't she realize you was in the truck? Yes, yeah, so after she got off the phone, and that's what I said, I I got a testimony. After okay. she got off the phone, I okay. recorded the whole thing. Okay. I'm by paperwork. I record and I do I do everything by right. paperwork. So I said, let me record this so they know. We was we had a load from Dallas, uh, Tennessee, not Tennessee, but uh, to to Mrs. We hmm. went to Mrs. But it was like Mrs. But like Salt Haven, Mississippi, kind of like that area. Right. And so I had so I said, let me let me out. I don't want to be. I don't want to be um, um, in the truck. In the truck with you. She was like, she was like, oh, why do you feel uncomfortable? I said, well, the conversation you just had for the last thirty minutes, um, I didn't feel comfortable with. I don't know how you operate, but I don't operate like that. Mm -hmm. And so she just kind of like started going off and doing all that. So at this point, I got her recorded already. I said, I already have you recorded. I said, you can let me out at the uh, anybody know they they have a, a terminal out there in um, Mississippi. Okay. And so I told her, let me out. My uh, I had my family come get me, and she tried to like put me out on the side of the highway. So 
And when she tried to do that, I'm trying to call the, you know, the police and let them know what's going on. And I'm like, hey, no, I'm pregnant. You know, I just trying, I'm trying to get to the terminal. So that way I know I at least feel safe and comfortable and I can keep somebody on what's going on. Oh, that was like the big uproar. And so wow. and you can look it, look it up. They did all the paperwork. They called me back. They, uh, they didn't want me to take them to court. I didn't take them to court. I end up just telling me the because uh, their tuition was very expensive at that time. Right. I just said, "Hey, let me get all my stuff. I don't put this on my credit. I will leave it alone." I was just like, "Let me leave it alone because I I was already focusing in on having a high risk pregnancy." Right. I said, "I don't want this six thousand dollars six thousand dollar debt. Let right. me out." Ran night the VP of the company. He let me out. I didn't have no problems. I left. Okay. I, 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 I didn't sign. Wow. I didn't sign no NDA, so that's why I'm, I'm able to tell my story. I'm telling everybody. I wow. Everybody. That, wow. Wow. <laughs> that's that's crazy. I mean, I mean, he, yes, uh, you I know, when you when, Ocho, when you on a when you when you on a when you on a trainer's truck because you know this it's it's this has to have a this needs a this conversation has to have. If I'm saying it right, mm -hmm. when y'all get on the truck, I mean, you know, y'all got to lay down some f like flatline rules. Like, look, we don't talk about religion. You know, we, we don't talk about your background. I, I don't need to hear the hard you, ER you or that. anything like that. You know, let's get that out the way first. And then we can yeah, have. But you a, don't think that we would have to do that in a still professional setting. You don't no, think that you would no, have to you, do that. No, you. No, 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 no. D. D, yes, yes, yes. You you do need to have that conversation. Whether it's in a professional oh, setting wow. or not, you're going to need to have that conversation. Man, man on man, woman on woman, man on man on woman. Uh, woman on woman, you know, the conversation should be uh, before y'all get started. Train me so that I can uh, be the best professional driver out here. That's it. We don't need to talk about... Yeah, but see, we don't need to get to know yourself, each other. They try to halfway, halfway train. The, and that's where you step in. When you see that, that's when you step in and mm -hmm. you say, you, you call your fleet manager or whoever, you know, that's doing the training thing, and you let them know. Like you already did. You told you called whoever you needed to call and told them right off the rip, hey, I'm not comfortable. Right. I'm not comfortable mm -hmm. with this trainer training me. I feel that I'm not getting training right. I want to get trained by somebody else. Period. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have to wait, then I'll wait. If it's a little bit too long, then I know I have to look elsewhere. But for, you know, but for the conversation it needs to be had. Like I said, for, for woman on woman, it just needs to, you know, uh, respect, you know, we, we, we're, yeah. he, we're, we're here, you know, train me so that I can get to be the professional driver that I am. We don't need to talk about religion. Yeah. We don't need to talk. About, yeah. <laughs> we, we don't need to talk about religion. We don't need to talk about this. All you just, all I need to know is that, you know, your hygiene is on point. My hygiene is on point and we're good. Man on now, man on woman. Nah, the conversation should go this way, bro. I am here to learn. That's it. That's yeah. it. You know, no, I'm not here for sets. I'm not here for a booty call. I'm not here for none of that. So no inappropriate yeah. talk. Uh, again, no religion talk, no political talk, none of that. That's the conversation you need to have with a man. Now, the conversation with a woman should be different, but the man, yeah, that conversation. And you, and you're right. You would think that you wouldn't need that conversation, but yeah, yeah, you're going to need that conversation because some guys, yeah. And as a matter of fact, I'm assuming that conversation needed to be had because you went to Swift and got hemmed up with another 
messed up trainer. What? What is yeah. going on? Man, I don't. I got cut off, but I call him whatever. I'm like, like, what the fuck, dude? Why did you do that? He's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I, I will go buy you another, another. I'm like, no, like you fucking did this. Like you making me feel uncomfortable. I'm like, hey, in which I have everything recorded by the way in everything, but that's another situation that I can upload. But I'm like, hey, why'd you do that? And he's like, I can go buy you another. I'm like, no, you made me feel very uncomfortable. I don't even want to ride with you no more. I'm done. Like, just leave me alone. Stop talking to me. Like, stop trying to apologize. So I'm, he's getting mad and frustrated. He was like, no, you need to fucking log back in to the truck, like cussing, getting loud. So now I'm calling my baby daddy to let him know, like, hey, need probably to come pick me up. I'm in San Antonio. I'm four hours away. Like, I'm, you know, I'm getting to with him. So he like, turn your location on so I can find you and stuff like that. So he ended up finding me when I'm coming back through Temple and Troy and the, the cities. Hey, look, I don't know. I don't know. But it was, I got messed up with that trainer and just a background story of that. So I'm, I'm finally at Swift this year, starting off like in December. I got hired, but I started on but, the, uh, let me, the weekend of New Year. Let me let me hold you up right quick. Now you you okay. you was with Knight, but mm -hmm. but since you was cleared, you didn't have a problem getting with Swift because Swift and Knight. Uh, uh not at all. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Not at all. See, Go ahead. Tell your story. Reply. I had never. I, so I I got cleared. No problem. Got hired on. Um, did the class. I was on a dedicated account but they had a real bad shortage in the in a motive department, but they didn't have no trainers. So I had to train with the guy that I was telling about on my uh, Snapchat that uh, he did a local route regional from uh, Dallas to San Antonio and back. That was his everyday thing Monday through Friday. So they, uh, I was waiting for a woman. That's the hardest part is I'll wait for a woman trainer to be backed up. And so this was the only one that was open locally for me to come home. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. That's cool. I didn't have no problems with him. The, the first the first week or so, no issue. Probably like, hey, you beautiful, whatever was going on. I didn't really find it, uh, you know, for me not to distract me from my money. So I'm like, I got three weeks later for me to try to get this done, whatever. When I finally, for the second week, and it just shorted up. I get out the truck, and I was just trying to explain to everybody. We was on our 30-minute break. We was pulled over on 35 at a rest stop. When we pulled over, I went in. I had already had bought my drink. And anybody who knows, when you get stuff from, like, all these, they, they don't sell that in regular gas station. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I had my water bottle, and I had like my, my Gatorade. And when I have my stuff and I get out to go use bathroom, I come back, my water bottle is literally down to the bottom. And I'm like, anybody knows, like, dang, I don't be even drinking that much because we drive trucks and I don't want to stop to use the bathroom. And I know how he operates. He used it one time there and one time to go back. I'm okay, cool. No problem. I get out the truck. I said, hey, did you drink my water bottle? And he was like, he was hesitant. I woke up and something that told me to look to the left. He took the water bottle and tried to like pull the red. Bring my water bottle. Literally, once again, got him recorded. Wait. Saw the conversation. Wait, he woke up. He woke up. He like. He woke up, saw your water bottle, and I did what with it? I had ended up waking up. I had ended up waking up because, like I told you, we was on a thirty minute on the thirty minute break. That's why I had, you know, how you win your head over, kind of like fall asleep and like to kind of like pitch your head to the side because we were in, we were in a day cab. We wasn't in a sleeper. So okay. I turned, you know, wake up wanting something to drink, and I think that my water bottle was right in the same place, and my purse was like, uh, so I'm like. Buys my, you know, my card. You know, any woman, they know how they purchase stuff. Me. So I'm like, why is all my stuff uh, being messed with? And what's going on? And I wake up drinking out of my water bottle. I said, hey, what the f is you doing? Like, why are you drinking out of my water bottle? He was like, oh, 
bad, my bad, like panicking and shaking. Oh, my bad. I didn't mean to do that. I thought it was fine. I said, I know you didn't think it was yours because, you know, I was telling him. I said, this water bottle come, come from all. You never bring nothing in here from all. So that's take this is yours. And I said that I was going to snack bag in my purse because I don't even keep my stuff like this. Oh, I didn't mean to. I was just trying to look to see if you have some gum and something like that because that's what you be offering me. Like, no, don't do that. I don't like you to do that. I already told you, trying to make you feel uncomfortable, trying to stop with the, you know, side comment. Um, if I was your, you know, baby daddy, I would do this for you. Oh, then you huh? gotta tell him that I give you, I give you money and stuff on the side, and just kind of saying very inappropriate stuff. Like I said, his words didn't mean nothing to me because, like I said, if you're trying to get to the money for your child. You're not caring about nothing because you ain't did nothing physically to me. Okay, so he's saying all this inappropriate stuff after he took your water bottle? He was saying inappropriate stuff like maybe like once. So his comments is what I'm saying. His comments didn't mean anything to me. My oh. mindset was like, let's get my training done because. I'm trying to provide for my child. Okay. I don't have time to one for another trainer for two to three weeks. That's right. when I push my time back. Right. But exactly. Longer, I'm in this training, this shitty pay. I don't want to do this. He's the only trainer that was doing, you know, that was trying to, you know, get me to make my money. And but I see that he just wanted me to be around him because he was, you know, physically attracted to me. And when I wasn't giving him like the time of play or like, like I said, I was recording stuff. And he was texting inappropriate like messages and stuff, and I would send it to my baby daddy, and he would, you know, almost wanted to fight him. And I was like, right, no, don't do because that. he's disrespecting you. Him. Yeah, he disrespected me, but I, I didn't look at it like that. I looked at it like, hey, we got a, a baby to provide for. You know, I don't have time to kind of apply for a different company, and you know, I get fired over some bull crap when I was going to just wait to report him and keep all my evidence at the end of my training. But once he started going through my purse that day and he was drinking out of my water bottle and we had that argument and he was trying to like force me out the truck and stuff like that. So I'm calling Swift. I called Ray, which is my seat manager at the time at Swift out here in Lancaster. Mm -hmm. I'm calling him, letting him know what's going on. I'm calling Ray on the phone, said, if there's a near gas station, tell him to put you out. I'm going to call his head manager. He was not trying to let me out the truck. Oops. When... I finally get to, an, it's a love on 35, exit mm -hmm. 19. And so I finally get to the love. He um, was arguing back and forth. I'm already telling my child's father uh, to come meet me at this gas station. I got on my, you know, anybody got an iPhone, you can follow the location. Right. I'm telling him to meet me so um, I can uh, get out of it. I end up calling Temple, he's in Temple, and I end up calling the police. The police came out there and did a report. And they told me that I could have filed charges on him for going through my stuff or whatever they were calling it. And he, he, he drunk after me because I don't know what he had or what's going on. And he was just like, I know you don't got nothing or whatever, but it was just like the uncomfortable ability that he even had to argue of like that I can see you in your inbox about what female truckers go through with male trainers. He go through so much. I had another trainer that woke up one person was smelling her underwear. So I sent me the picture and everything. So you get to the you get to the loves, you get out of the truck. Mm -hmm. Uh you you get out of the mm -hmm. truck. Or you were still in the truck, but he was refusing to let you out of the truck. Yes. So I what he's what his fingers on a door lock or something? That's I mean you I, No. But when, when it happened and everything, like I said, we was on our break. Mm -hmm. We was we was calm. But I said, hey, why are you bringing my stuff? You know, we get to talking. He had, all, we already had was like um, pulling off to leave. Mm -hmm. So when, when you go down the road, it was, I'm telling him like, hey, just go ahead and let me out on the next exit. So as he kind of denied what he did, I'm calling my boyfriend, like, hey, come get me, come meet me, and everything, because he was on his way, yeah, to, to, to the love. I'm already contacting him to take me to the to the love, 
because I didn't want to just be at no uh no rest stop. So I called, like I said, I contacted Ray with with the qualification uh the quality manager, whatever there at Swift, um, to like, hey, let her, you know, where she want to get out at, let her out. I don't, you know, want any problems. She called his manager at the time and let him know what was was going on. And he telling his manager, oh yeah, okay, I'm gonna let her out. If this, you know, he just cussing, he cussing at everybody at this point. And when he finally let me out, we both being combative. And I'm just like, hey, like you the one who did this shit. I didn't tell you to go through my purse. We going back and forth. I'm like, F you and all type of stuff. Stupid uh, calling me bitches and whores and stuff now. I said, you know, going back and forth. I'm like, how am I being a whore? I said, I never F you. And I said, you just was trying to give me some money and pay me. <laughs> so what are you talking about? You know, I'm like, you just saying stuff because you got caught and you was on bull crap. And now you risk yourself and you risk your job. And I, and you know, and finally, because I tried to keep him waiting there because I wanted this time from, from my uh, boyfriend to whoop his A. And that's what I was on because now you can put me in jeopardy and danger with you. And I had to call Temple Police Station to uh, show up. Officer uh, Kate showed up and tried to hurry up and pull off, they end up putting him over on the side of the road because I told him, I said, I'm going to file a report on you. And that's how it escalated. That's how it went. I was out there at the love for like an extra 20 minutes and my child fathers came. We ended up having to drive two hours back from Temple to Dallas. And we end up at the office to tell our story to the, uh, the executive. With well, all that happened down there, man, that was crazy. I'm sure that was tumultuous. Yeah. But you got back to, you know, you got back safe and sound, back to Dallas. But you went back to Swift. You told them, you know, of the issue and everything. What did Swift have to say? And did they, you know, did they, you know, by chance, you know, put you with another trainer or or did or did you even did you even stay with Swift after all of that? I did not want to stay with Swift. I ended up taking like a whole week off and they was calling and calling me back. Like, hey, we found the female trainer. We have a better job offer. And I had kind of reconsidered because of the fact that they said well, we know that you had been wanting something local because you have an infant. So we have a schedule from between 2 or 3 a.m. You could come in Monday through Friday, be off 1500 guaranteed. So once they gave me that training, I was training in a mode of just picking up locally off the rail yard. I was like, that's what I've been asking for, you know. So I just took it, and once I got my experience, I just, I left. I stayed there from January all the way to May. Once I got my months in, I, J.B. Hunt picked me up. I left. Okay. So that's why I said it was kind of like a blessing in disguise because I would have had to leave there, start all the way over, do all of that, and got my time. And that's all. So you put your, so you put your time in with Swift. Mm -hmm. Wow. Put your time in with Swift. Got your got your experience and now you with uh jb hunt but in the midst mm -hmm. of all that the, the 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 trainer that was smelling the panties did that involve you or that was somebody else no that was someone else that was another person that was going through with the trainer at swift wow and she told you that that trainer was was smelling her panties yeah like literally went inside her bag and was going through her clothes while she was asleep, you know? And I just feel like when I was going through my same thing, cause we was in training class together. Wow. That's so, what do you know? Uh, do you, do you know the outcome of, of that situation? I'm, I'm hoping she, the, the person got fired immediately. She, uh, told on him, he got fired. He's not even a trainer no more there. And even the person who did the, all the stuff to me, he got fired the uh, same day. So, oh, okay. 
that's why that's why I said I was just trying to be in a place to like become a mentor or trainer or whatever because I know I know most women go through this. I get all so many stories all the time. Yeah, I I get horror stories from from females uh that has similar you know, similar experience with trainees, I mean, with trainers that were prompted me to make my video about be about your business. And some of these, some of these male trainers is just not about their business sometimes. And I don't understand why, no. you know, you, you no. literally want to put your, your, your career that you spent a lot of money for on the line because what you, 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 you haven't had no poom poom in a while, and they've been driving for fourteen or fifteen years. That's the crazy part. They do this with new people. <laughs> well, that is that's crazy, man. Dierica, thank you very much, man, for sharing your story, man. That's is it's 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 messed up that you know to this day, you know, females mm -hmm. is still going through it. You know, I, I don't understand, you know, why these mega carriers that, you know, that have trainers, I mean, that had these type of trainers don't put no, you know, don't put no effort and money. <laughs> well, not effort and money, but put um, it's on the tip of my tongue. Yeah, put a little bit more. I'll say the effort. OK, effort. I'll use that. Put a little bit more effort in vetting these you know, vetting these trainers, man. They they need they need good professional trainers to train, you know, these new drivers that's coming out here. Not just not just females, males too. You know, they need they need yeah. good trainers to train these females and male drivers, you know. But on the female side, they just need trainers to just be focused about the business and not about the bullshit. Yeah. True. All right, all right. Well, D. Erica, man, sh tell share your uh, TikTok where people can find you at. TikTok, you can find me, uh, D. Erica twelve twelve, uh, D. Erica underscore twelve twelve. Uh, support. Uh, come watch my story, ladies or even gentlemen, just to get any update. Um, I have a start coming up really soon with my own nonprofit to help. Uh. Uh, kids as let's force in, in the system so that they can uh, have training. I started that on the side, even working now. So just look it out and just get information and update. But thank you so much for even having the opportunity to do my story on your podcast. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. Guys, you know, the best conversation starts here on the Lockout Men podcast show. If you guys want to join me, y'all know what to do. 216-600-2090. And that's how y'all can get in contact with the Lockout Men. And you can come in and we can chat it up. Just like me and Dierica here. Dierica, interesting name. Once again, Not I, I, I love it. I love it. I mean, it's, it's weird, but I love it though. Uh, thank you for coming. <laughs> thank you for coming on and sharing your experience. I uh, hope everything else works out for you. Uh, shout out to your nonprofit and everything. And I am definitely still following you on uh, on TikTok as well. All right. Thank you so much for the support. There's something in the air tonight. Got a feeling coming over me. I swear that this is that place to be in the water. In the, the water. In the water